Gut. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I wish to make my contribution to this, uh, the Water Amendment Bill of 2023, which is uh, a bill or an act of Parliament to provide for PPP's arrangement for... And S Senator Cheruyot, you're replying to the motion? No, 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 contributing. You moved it, huh? Oh, yeah. No. You actually moved it. Was moved last uh, in the last session. Last session? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll allow you to speak. You want to reply? Is there anybody else who wants to speak? Do you wish to speak? Okay, S Senator Omtata. Uh, Madam Speaker, I rise to address major concerns in the proposed amendments to the, to the way water as a commodity is going to be handled. And especially the proposals that have been put there in terms of uh, privatizing the sector, allowing private players to come in and play a significant role. Water is a basic requirement of life, and it must be availed to the population in a manner that is not exploitative. It must be availed in a manner that people don't make profit out of it. A, I think there's a, there's a petition from Runda with the Nairobi County Assembly where there's a private company supplying water there and they're complaining they're paying about five, six times what the, what the Nairobi City Council Nairobi Water is charging. So a private player would come in to make profit on a basic commodity. And that's what my concern is. It, the water should remain with the municipalities and the municipalities will just ensure efficiency so that water can be availed in proper quantities. Otherwise, private actors will say, okay, the informal settlement may not be able to afford this water what you want to charge. So the, the water will not go there. So I would really want that uh, we look at the issue of privatizing this sector or allowing private, sec uh, private actors to come and play a significant role at the best level. If you want to go and purify the water and sell them in bottles, you can do that. But to, to sell water in the pipes, and then when you sell this water, and when you put a company to sell water in an area in, a, in pipes, how would you distinguish water? How would you allow competition in that area? Will an area be bound by the person who laid pipes in that area, that they can only get water from that vendor, not from the other vendor. So, Madam Speaker, I think that it will be most inappropriate and to look against the rights of Article 43, where the state has an obligation to provide water, clean water in quantities that are required. If we put in private players to supply a basic commodity like that, the market is driven by profit. And that drive is going to distort water and water is going to be owned by the elite. The poor people will have no access to water. What must happen that water must remain a service provided, piped water I mean, piped water must be provided by the municipalities or the counties 
and if private actors want to come in, they can come in and uh, brand water and have whatever, but the pipelines must remain open to everybody. Otherwise, we are going to end up in a situation whereby provision of water will be a problem. And there are case studies around the world whereby this kind of action that has been taken, that is being proposed, has been taken, and we have ended up in situations whereby people have been overcharged. Look at the price of bottled water. At one point, it was more expensive to buy water than to buy petrol in this country. So that should be an indicator that the profit motive and the fact that water is such a, a basic requirement of, of life, that without water you basically have no life, we should not allow private actors there. Water is like air, it must be availed at a minimal cost. Just the way we avail roads at a minimum cost to everybody, irrespective of, of class, but to ensure that those who don't have as much as others still have access to water. And so the proposal to allow private actors to play a prominent role at the foundational level of water provision is an, uh, something we should be reluctant to embrace. And I would urge that that particular part of the act be amended. With those few remarks, Madam Speaker, I rest my case. I now invite the mover to reply. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I wish to uh, thank colleagues who have taken time to uh, debate this uh, water amendment bill uh, that is before this House. I have listened to um, colleagues speak on this, many in support some with concerns. Unfortunately, many of those concerns, Mr. Speaker, like the ones by my colleague, Senator Okia Mtata, are either from a point of not completely understanding the proposal and the private-public partnership architecture in the Republic, or, Mr. Speaker, there might be other reasons beyond which I can understand. Because, why do I say so? In the PPP law that we passed in 2021, and I'd wish to invite my good friend Senator Okio Mtata to read it and appreciate it, at the contracting phase of any service or goods that a private player has been allowed to provide to the public under a PPP agreement, the government still retains the control of pricing and you enter into a contract way in advance. So it's not like you're giving to a private player, say, to run a public road and saying you'll charge the amount of money that you want. If that was the case, Madam Speaker, with the kind of huge demand that we have, for example, on the expressway, they'd be charging a thousand shillings so that they discourage other people from using it. The contractual agreement that Government of Kenya enters with any private player under the PPP agreement details how you arrive at the price, taking care of the concerns of many Kenyans, such as what Senator uh, Umtata has carefully uh, brought out, that this is a commodity that many Kenyans uh, cannot even, first of all, find it, forget about purchase. And it is on that premise, my good friend Senator Umtata, that the thinking has been that if we wait for a time that we believe government using our own taxes, living in a country with such a crowded fiscal space, will provide water for all citizens, then there are fellow compatriots who will have to wait until Jesus comes back before they drink, piped, and have access to clean water, as expected under Article 43 of our Constitution. And therefore, it is under that premise and the realization that we do not have sufficient resources to pipe water to every home in this republic, that there is now a thinking that we can amend the Water Act of 2016 and make it possible through certain private players and entities that they enter into a chaperoned and well-guided 
contractual framework with the water works agencies and the various uh, state corporations, um, uh, Madam Speaker, to be able to provide water at a price that is affordable in the right quantity. This country where anybody walks around with water bowsers without even any certification to show where they have gotten that water from. There are people who are uh, si uh, siphoning water out of public water agencies and coming in to sell within informal settlements and various parts of the city. Madam Speaker, we want to make that a thing of the past. How do you make it? You bring in the efficiencies of private sector and ensure that so long as you agree with them pre they are rolling out of the particular project and tell them this is the determined price for this particular area, uh, Madam Speaker, so that they can go out and agree. I know there have been very serious concerns, and on that I agree, on how some of the provisions on this bill roll back the gains of devolution. That much I concede, Madam Speaker, and I'm happy I've seen the report of our uh, Lands and Natural Resources uh, Committee that has proposed amendments that will ensure that our county governments play a key and instrumental role in this PPP arrangement, so that it's not just by the determination of national government alone. The county governments also have a place in these agreements because constitutionally they are mandated to reticulate water and ensure that it gets to all the citizens of the republic. Therefore, I am happy and pleased with the amendments that have been provided by uh, the water and natural resources uh, committee, uh, Madam Speaker because they have appreciated the concerns that many uh, uh, senators had. And that is the essence of debate, dear colleagues. When a bill of parliament, when a bill is proposed before the House of Parliament, it is our duty. I don't appreciate, uh, Madam Speaker, this business, and I see... Order, many... Senator, uh, uh, Senator Edi and Senator Chesang, Just, um, Just Just please... Please, please listen. You know, the two gentlemen earlier on had informed us the kind of things they do in public washrooms, Madam Speaker. So when they see them ex excited together, I am tempted to think other things. Anyway, uh, Madam Speaker, the point I was making is that when a bill is proposed before the House of Parliament, I see a very lazy argument being peddled on the floor of the Senate many times when colleagues say, oh, I am opposed to this bill. Because it rolls back the gains of devolution. And I wonder, so what is your job? Constitutionally, under Article 95 of the Constitution, no other body has the power to make statute which has the force of law other than Parliament, where we sit. Therefore, I wish to encourage our colleagues that any time you see any bill and you feel that a particular clause is offensive, because many times, Madam Speaker, hardly do you find that everybody, somebody is opposed to a bill in its entirety. It's particular, particular clause, a particular uh, line within the bill that they feel, no, this should have been framed differently. And therefore, I wish to urge our colleagues that when you disagree with certain provisions, the best thing to do immediately after you have made your arguments on the floor, Madam Speaker, is to file an amendment. And perhaps even when you read it way in advance during the stakeholder engagement with our committees, Go and convince and persuade the committees so that it comes even together with the amendments that come with our various committees, Madam Speaker, because that is our duty. That's what we are paid for. We are paid to legislate. There is no other legislature in this republic other than this house. The way we shall protect devolution, Madam Speaker, is not by rejecting bills and just saying, oh, I don't agree with this one because of this or the other. It is our duty and wish to encourage colleagues, Senators, Madam Speaker, that every time there are such bills that are speak to important. First of all, appreciate the concept. And we have said the concept is very noble, Madam Speaker, that we want to make it possible for every citizen of this country to access water. The challenge, what is the challenge? The challenge is that realistically speaking, in the fiscal space that Kenya is, it's not possible for government to provide the resources needed, Madam Speaker, to roll out water to every, every, um, every Kenyan. Therefore, what is the proposition in the bill? The proposition in the bill is to partner with the private sector and agree with them because this law does not, is not a standalone law. It is in red alongside the PPP, uh, public-private partnership law that we have already passed in this law. And on any matter that involves 
the public in a big way such as water madam speaker government still retains the final decision on issues of course because it's, a, it's of a great concern to the people therefore madam speaker as i reply i hope all the colleagues that spoke and said oh i have disagree with this bill because of the following provisions abcd that i will be seeing them filing amendments so that they align it with devolution the way uh, the way they are proposing i am glad though that speaking to the chair of this uh, lands and environment